Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So a senator is going to be discussing his plans to make the social security program more fair by increasing payments for millions of individuals receiving it. We're going to be discussing how his plan would work and we're also going to be playing a clip where he discusses his plan as well. And most importantly, this happens to be bipartisan, which means this actually has a chance of passing, unlike some of the other bills that we currently see in Congress. But before we go ahead and dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm, and also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Okay, so starting things out, in regards to this plan, not only would it increase payments for millions of individuals currently receiving Social Security benefits, but it would also make the program solvent for a longer period of time. So we would not have that 2033 deadline where if nothing is done, we'll see an automatic cut of 20 to 25%. So starting out, this plan is bipartisan. It's headed by Bill Cassidy. He's a Republican. And then we have Angus King, who is an independent, but he caucuses and sides and votes in most bills with the Democrats. So that's the most important thing because when we're talking about these bills that are only led by Democrats, sure, it might be able to pass the House if Democrats have a slim majority in the House maybe in the after the 2024 election, but once it reaches the Senate, it would need 60 votes in the Senate to pass and Republicans nor the Democrats have had 60 seats in the Senate. It's very rare. The last time it's happened was 2008 or 2009 for a very short period of time. So it's very unlikely we're going to be able to get any of these bills passed through the Senate unless they happen to be bipartisan. And most importantly, this bill happens to be bipartisan because we have Republicans and Democrats coming up with a solution. So that's the most important thing. Now, how this plan would work is they would borrow $1.5 trillion separate from the Social Security Trust Fund. So they would not be taking any money from the Social Security Trust Fund. So any money in the trust fund currently now would be completely safe. Now, what they would do with this $1.5 trillion is they would invest it into the United States economy. So let's think like stocks, real estate, things like that. And then they would see whatever type of returns they would get. So let's just take an example here. If we look at the price for the S&P 500 back in January of 2000, we can see the price is right around $1,441. So if they were to you know, use $1.5 trillion and buy up, let's say like the S&P 500 or whatever stocks, uh, real estate, etc. Back then, we can see the price today is 4478 So, you know, again, if we invested $1.5 trillion back in January of 2000, that investment would have 3 x or more than 3 x by now. So obviously, it would have paid off big time. Now, obviously, future returns are not necessarily guaranteed. The stock market could always go down. But if we look at the historical price of the stock market, over time, it has gone up. And again, we're not going to be taking any money from the uh, Social Security Trust Fund as is, so there would be no risk to the trust fund. The only risk would be the additional fund that we'd be taking out in the borrowed $1.5 trillion. So we're going to be watching this clip by Bill Cassidy where he explains his plan, and then we're going to come back to talk about it. But Neil, let's just stop for a second. People start talking about that. Let's talk about some other things you could do. One thing you can do is actually make the program more fair. You can actually increase benefits for many people. And the way we do that, and this is the principal part of it, we create an investment fund separate from Social Security. We don't touch any Social Security dollars. An investment fund that we hold in escrow. And you allow the strength of the American economy to, to, to build a bridge to sustainability for the Social Security Trust Fund. We end up under our plan with enough money over time in order to increase benefits for millions of Americans. Indeed, under our plan, millions of Americans will see increased benefits when the law is passed, and no one will see a cut, and no one will see their age of eligibility increase if, they're, if they are close to retirement at all. So uh, you, you have to define what is close to retirement. I get that. And you were referring to Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill, then Speaker of the House, to come up with a plan that later became the, the basic part of the Grace Commission that, that did extend Social Security shelf life for decades. But didn't President Bush, George W. Bush, um, look at doing just this? And, of course, it was the third rail, and he was just uh, electrocuted. A great question. What, what George W. wished to do 
was to create private accounts. Each individual would have his or her own account. Right, right. No, we younger people. We created, it would be open to younger people. But go ahead. And and the fear of some was that the risk was borne by the beneficiary. Under our plan, the risk is borne by the fund, not by the beneficiary, and the beneficiary is guaranteed to get get the benefits which have been promised to her or promised to him. She is at no risk whatsoever. The risk is borne by the fund, but over the time horizon we're talking about that, that will be a minimal risk. Um, Senator, uh, there's another issue that keeps coming up, whether we limit the, the, the Social Security taxes to you know, you're, you're really at around a hundred, you know, thousand and a half to, and, and there are a lot of people get paid a lot more than that, and that, that their contribution into Social Security should be paid at a set rate, of, no matter how much you make. What do you think of that? Yeah, so what we do, we don't raise the rates, period, end of story. We don't raise the rates. Um, but what we do is, uh, what we would do if we can get people to buy into it, if we can get people to choose to preserve, strengthen and, and, uh, Social Security as opposed to let it go insolvent, if we can get people to choose, uh, over 40 years, over 40 years, we gradually increase the uh, percent of wage income to which the Social Security the payroll tax applies, returning it to where it was in 1936 and where it was in 1983 when Reagan and O'Neill did their proposal. But as and you know, so, but as you know I mean, though, uh, Senator, I mean, when we first got Social Security, 16 workers were paying in for every one person who was getting Social Security. Now, of course, it's almost dead even or close to it. How do you change that math or can you? Yeah, absolutely you can. We patterned after something that was done under George W. Bush has been in effect for 30 years or so, uh, if I have my math right. Uh, the National Railroad Retirement System, which was had, had fewer workers and more retirees and was going insolvent. Sound familiar? They created a fund, kind of what we're talking about, they created a fund in which they uh, uh, begin to invest separate from their, you know, uh, a fund, and they've got an 8.9 percent return every year. Mm -hmm. A system that was going insolvent is firmly in the black, paying the benefits that were promised. If if we had done that with social back then, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Well, the best time to plant an oak tree is 50 years ago, and the second best time is today. So let's jump on it now to choose to preserve and strengthen the program and not do what, say, President Biden's doing, choosing to let it go insolvent. And when it goes insolvent, people get a 24 percent cut in their benefits. So again, in this plan, as Cassie just explained, we could have an increase for millions of Social Security beneficiaries, making the program more fair, making it more sustainable, and making it last for a longer period of time. Now, the only real downside that we can hear from this clip is the fact that they might have to raise the full retirement age up to 70. This would be just for younger generations that saying people below the age of 40, their full retirement age would be lifted up to 70. Everyone currently receiving Social Security benefits or nearing the, the uh, retirement age of 62, their age would not be boosted up any, so they would be completely safe. So that would be the only real downside for younger generations. Now, of course, there is also a lot of upside as well. So like we just mentioned, it is bipartisan, which means it actually has a chance of passing the Senate where it would need at least 60 votes. We could have Democrats and Republicans voting on this bill, voting in approval of this bill, rather than one siding voting yes and the other side voting no. And then, of course, we don't have any cuts for people receiving benefits right now, so that's also a pro. And although future stock market returns are not necessarily guaranteed, we're not going to be risking any money currently in the trust fund. The only risk is on the borrowed $1.5 trillion. So there's really nothing, of course, to lose here other than losing the borrowed $1.5 trillion. And of course, there is a lot of upside, at least historically speaking as well. But let me know what your thoughts and comments are below. Would you like to see this bill passed? Would you like to see this plan implemented? What are your thoughts? Leave them down below. But that's all the news that we have for today's video. I certainly hope that you enjoyed. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate if you could give this video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. And I will see you in the next video.